Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking about stitching vias in your PCB layout. Now, stitching vias are very important for tying ground regions together in your PCB layout, and that's not all they're used for. They're also used in routing, they're used in RF design, and they're very important to be sized correctly and spaced correctly. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Make sure to open up your copy of Altium Designer and follow along, come check it out. So there are a few important instances in which to use stitching vias. Now stitching vias are most commonly used to tie grounds together. So if you have copper pour on multiple layers and all of that copper pour is tied to the same ground net, you can connect all of those grounds together using an array of stitching vias. Another instance in when to use stitching vias is when routing. So while routing a PCB, Stitching vias are very important for maintaining ground continuity, and that's especially the case for lower speed digital signals. Now with higher speed digital signals, such as you might have on a differential pair, or in RF design where you need to take a single ended net and route it across multiple layers, stitching vias are also very important. And this is an area where I think folks will get into trouble with stitching vias because they're gonna rely on the same technique used for stitching ground nets together and try to use that to support routing. And this is where you can run into trouble. Now with RF design, one of the common uses aside from maintaining a return path is to use them for shielding. I think this is another area where designers may use the same technique that they use to generate stitching vias to tie grounds together. And then they'll expect that to provide sufficient shielding against specific RF frequencies. That's actually not going to work out. And if you don't size and space those stitching vias properly, you won't provide shielding against some target frequency. So now that we've looked at these three primary uses, let's get into an example project in Altium Designer. I'll show you number one, where to access a stitching via tool. And then of course, how to size and space your stitching vias together to support routing and to provide shielding against specific frequencies. So I'm inside Altium Designer, and what I'm gonna show you now is kind of the typical way that someone might use stitching vias to tie together copper pour. So this is our NRF52 example project that we've been working on in some other videos. If you haven't seen any of those other videos, I would encourage you to check out the link in the description. You can watch some of those other videos. Now here on this top layer, the reason we have all of this copper pour is to set the impedance of this feed line going into this antenna. So we're using copper pour for a specific reason here. Now, because we've used copper pour on layers one and two and three to provide ground for all these different signals, we then have to, of course, ensure that we're symmetric throughout the stack up. And so of course we also have it on four, five, and six. So that's the primary reasoning for using ground pour. And then the majority of this ground pour is all tied together. Now the typical method that someone will use to then just set stitching vias to connect all these grounds together is you'll of course select the ground net and you'll go to tools, via stitching, via shielding, and add stitching to net. So here inside this dialog, you can see very clearly that we have got a number of different options that we can set here for our stitching vias. And I think this is where someone will start to question what size should the stitching vias be? What should the spacing between them be? Should I have this kind of offset that you can see here? What should the grid size be? These are all fair questions. And then of course, here you have a drill pair that you can select as well. So if you have blind and buried vias, you could just stitch together ground pour that is connected to those specific layers. So here like top layer to L2 or L2 to L3. But here what we're gonna do is the top to bottom layer. And the reason I've selected this whole size 10 mil and 18 mil diameter pad is because that's already a standard template that we have built in here as one of our VIA templates. Now the fabricator that I plan to use for this board prefers to have a minimum through hole size of 10 mil diameter. So that's what I have set here. And then I've just left the pad set to 18 mil diameter. So eight above the drill diameter. That's class two compliant. 
for the highest producibility factor. That particular setting is just what's already set in the PCB for other areas in this board. So that's what I'm gonna go with here for my stitching vias. Now, the next thing that I think comes up is what should the grid size be? So this grid size here, should it be 80 mils? Should it be 100 mils? Should it be 250 mils? Well, I think this is where a lot of designers will start to guess. And so just as an example here, if I set 250 mils for this grid size and I hit okay, you're gonna see here in this information dialog, only five stitching vias were added to the ground net. And you can see where they're at. You can see right here where my mouse is. We got one, two, three, four, and five. So the reason so few were added into this board is two reasons. First of all, that spacing is actually just really large. It's, it's excessively large for what you need to do for stitching vias. But the other reason is that this board is actually pretty small. So if I just use the measure tool to estimate the distance, you can see here that the board measures about you know, an inch and a half across. 250 mil spacing between stitching vias is basically six stitching vias. The board size is too small to accommodate that distance between stitching vias. So for that reason, you should naturally put your spacing smaller. So I think that's a good place to start is first, look at your board size, think about how many and where you need to have your stitching vias, and then use that as a guide to try and figure out what the spacing should be. So just as an example, if I select these and just delete them, I can then go back over here to the ground net, hit tools, go back into this tool, and I can change the spacing. So let's go back to 80 mil spacing. And with 80 mil spacing, you can see we have, first of all, a lot more stitching vias, of course, added into the ground net. But then you can see where they're located. They're located pretty much everywhere in this system. That's gonna give us a nice low impedance connection between all of our different ground regions throughout the board, throughout this entire stack up. And that's a very good way to do stitching vias. So this is really the first place to start when you're trying to play stitching vias in your PCB. Now, the next place to start looking at placement of stitching vias and things like spacing of stitching vias is to, of course, look at your layer transitions. So one of the reasons that we need to have stitching vias alongside digital signals is so that we maintain a return path when we're crossing multiple layers. So just as an example, let's take a look at these MOSI and MISO pins. These MOSI and MISO pins come from layer four, and then you can see here that they've made a via transition up to, looks like layer three. So here, right here at layer three, we have these two vias right here, and they're going directly down to layer four. Now, best practices would state that if we were, say, taking these two pins and then dropping down to a lower layer, we would wanna put a ground return via somewhere nearby. So an ideal spot might be right here in this ground island. And that can be a little tricky, especially in a board like this, because this board is actually really tight. There's not a lot of clearance here to be able to do that. So it would be a good idea if you can to put one of those vias right here in this area where my mouse is. And sometimes that might involve moving some of these components over just a little bit. What you could do is basically take this guy, move it over, take this one, move it over, clean up the routing a little bit, and that's gonna leave just enough room to place a via right here next to the MOSI pin. That would then be able to drop through, looks like almost all the way through the stack up. And all you'd have to do is just move this trace and this trace. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of these existing ground vias, and grab it, we'll copy it, and then we'll go over here. We're just gonna place it right here. Here, I wanna make sure that I have this set to ground. We may need to move this just slightly so we can make some room. And just to clean things up, I'm gonna shelve all of the polygons for the moment. Here we can drag over the V-read trace onto this other spot over here. So now we have these components connected. And then down here on L4, you'll notice that this ground via is interfering just a bit with these two traces. So we can just take this one, drag it down, take this one and reroute it. Again, we may have a little bit of an issue here with spacing. So sometimes you just need to grab this, move it just a little bit more, move this down a bit, and that should make just enough room to be able to route between those two vias and then make this connection. And so here, I think we're okay. We've got another ground via right here that's going to provide a return current for the MOSI signal. I think best practice would be to maybe put another ground via up here if you could. So we're not gonna do that just yet. 
but that should illustrate where you could put those ground views. Now, if you're dealing with differential pairs operating at high speeds, or if you're dealing with an RF signal that's operating above about 2.4 gigahertz, you actually need to intentionally design the stitching via array so that you can hit an impedance target in that via transition. So I've discussed this quite a bit in the past when we looked at via impedance calculators. And if you take a look in the description, you'll see a link to that video and that outlines some of the strategies and reasoning that's used to actually try and hit a target impedance using stitching vias. So that's one of the reasons that we would use stitching vias in RF or in much higher speeds than uh, the bus that we're dealing with here in this board. So now let's look at the last reasoning that we might use stitching vias in a PCB and that reasoning is for shielding. This array that we originally set up with 250 mil spacing between all of our stitching vias, that 250 mil spacing is really long. And we actually saw that there was a lot of open areas in that board. Here, once we change this to 80 mil spacing, now this 80 mil spacing puts a tighter array of vias together, and that's going to allow it to block higher frequency radiation or inhibit higher frequency radiation from traveling through the edge of the board in these inner layers. So that's one of the other reasons that you would use stitching vias. Those stitching vias can be set as shielding by adjusting the spacing between those stitching vias or by adjusting the pitch, as we sometimes say, between those stitching vias. Let's just look at this as an example. And I did this previously in one of the NRF videos, but I'll go ahead and repeat it here so you can see how the calculation is done. So what is the maximum frequency that you can block with a given stitching via array? Well, in this case, with our 80 mil spacing, our 80 mil spacing is going to be able to block some maximum frequency and lower. It's going to provide good shielding effectiveness for that range of radiation. Now, the maximum frequency that this stitching via array can block corresponds to this distance between our two stitching vias being equal to one eighth of a wavelength of that given frequency. So that's a complex way of saying that we simply take this distance, convert it to a wavelength, and multiply that by eight, convert that to a frequency, and then that tells us the maximum frequency. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 80 mils, we're gonna convert it to millimeters, and we're gonna convert that to meters, of course. Now, this distance is one eighth wavelength. So the full wavelength, I just take this, multiply it by eight. We're gonna use that to then calculate the frequency associated with that wavelength, assuming a decay of four, which is what we have for our substrate. And what we get is a value of 9.375 gigahertz. So this stitching via array that we've placed in this PCB could provide decent shielding effectiveness up to 9.375 gigahertz. Now, if you were expecting this board to be deployed in an area that was going to be interacting or receiving higher frequencies than 9.375 gigahertz, you would wanna take all of this stitching vias and put them closer together. And you can just do that in the stitching via tool in Altium Designer. Now you'll notice here that we have a lot of stitching vias running along this feed line. Now these stitching vias are designed to confine this 2.4 gigahertz signal that's being fed into this antenna within this region of the PCB. And if we just look at the pitch between these vias, we're gonna see that this pitch is 20 mils. So we could conceivably shield up to about 4X this frequency, or we could shield against up to 37 and a half gigahertz in this DK4 material that we have here that makes up our PCB. So you need to know the DK value for your PCB substrate. You then need to know the intended environment or what frequencies you're going to be working with and trying to block in your PCB if you're going to be using stitching vias for RF shielding. So this is another instance where if you just guess at the spacing between the stitching vias, you might underestimate the frequency that you're going to be able to block in your board. So we took a multi-pronged approach at dealing with this. First, we had to make sure that we got enough stitching vias so that we had a nice low impedance ground connection everywhere in this board. We also wanted to make sure that we're able to suppress any 2.4 gigahertz radiation from this antenna from flowing back into the PCB. And then we verified our initial guess here of 80 mils 
against that 2.4 gigahertz signal that you're gonna be transmitting here along this antenna. And then of course we found that it checks out. We found that this stitching via array can suppress a much higher frequency. So this stitching via array is appropriate for this board. Last thing we would want to do if we were looking at this board and we need to make sure that we have enough stitching vias everywhere to cover all of our signal transitions is to just go through and look at all of your buses that are going to be used for communication in this board. So here, you can see here, we have a MISO, MOSI, and SCK. This is all for, of course, a SPI bus. You can see here that we have placed one ground via here. We could do well to maybe place a couple of other ground vias here just to provide clear return paths when we're doing these signal transitions across the design. We also have some IOs here, but you'll notice that these IOs largely lead straight over to, to this connector up on the top part of the board. We've got a couple of other signal transitions though, here on IO7 and IO11. You can see here that it would probably be a good idea to place a ground via right there so that we can provide a clear return path throughout the entire stack up. So this ground via is gonna be simple to place. All we need to do is come over here. We can just grab this ground via and copy it. We can come back over here to these IOs. We can go ahead and place one next to each of these via transitions. Now make sure that you mind your whole wall to whole wall spacing here. And then of course, you wanna then scroll through this layer stack, make sure that there are no clearance errors. Here we just make a very slight adjustment and then re-pour. And then you can see all the design rules are still gonna be satisfied. And then we're able to maintain that return path across this layer transition throughout the stack up. So that concludes our tutorial on stitching vias and why you use them. We'll be doing another video where we actually show how to use stitching vias to design signal transitions. It is related to some of the stuff that we talked about with via impedance. And so we'll get a little bit deeper into that into an upcoming video. Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator folks.